it's it's very interesting and very important for us to just look at some passages um, in this work in which we get a sense of a great inf information um, regards to what what Alice Walker is up to in the ways in which the bodies of of the characters in this work are described. And remember that this is a first-person narrative, and it's the, in the voice um, of the mother. Um, and, and here's the mother um, describing how she sees herself. She says, in real life, I'm a large, big-boned woman with rough, man-working hands. In the winter, I wear flannel nightgowns to bed and overalls during the day. I can kill and clean a hug as mercilessly as a man. My fat keeps me hot in zero weather. I can work outside all day breaking ice to get water for washing. I can eat pork liver cooked over the open fire minutes after it comes steaming from the hog. One winter I knocked a bull calf straight in the brain between the eyes with a sledgehammer and had the meat hung up to chill before nightfall. But of course, all this does not show on television. I am the way my daughter would want me to be, a hundred pounds lighter, my skin like an uncooked barley pancake, my hair glistens in the hot bright lights. Johnny Carson has much to do to keep up with my quick and witty tongue. So this is the image she thinks her daughter should have of her. And of course, there's the image of how she sees herself. She's a woman with these physical traits, a black woman, uh, and she sees herself as in, in very negative ways. And, and these phenotypes are related to the, the ways in which she values the lighter skin, the longer hair, the smaller body. And yet she's so efficient. She's a powerful woman. She's a strong, independent woman, and yet feels intimidated um, by her daughter. That's how she describes, um, she describes her, herself. That's how she understands herself to be. Um, and then we get this moment where she describes her daughter. She says, D is lighter than Maggie with nicer hair and a fuller figure. She's a woman now, though sometimes I forget. How long ago was it that the other house burned? 10, 12 years? Sometimes I can still hear the flames and feel Maggie's arms sticking to me, but her hair smoking and her dress falling off her in little black papery flakes. Her eyes seem stretched open, blazed open by the flames reflected in them. And D, I see her standing off under the sweet gum tree she used to to dig gum out of, a look of concentration on her face as she watched the last dingy gray board of the house fall in toward the red hot brick chimney. Why don't you do a dance around the ashes? I wanted to ask her. She had hated that house so much. It's a very interesting moment because, of course, in the contrasting views, Maggie is not attractive, D's lighter skin. Um, and these two descriptions are really telling about the way that the mother sees herself and the way that the mother sees her daughter. But she, it's also clear that there's already a, a, a kind of rift between them because, of course, D is watching this fire, this fire that damaged, that, that permanently scarred Maggie, this fire that did this to her. And D seems un impervious to the tragedy of it. And she's, she's, the mother says she witnessed how D felt that the house should just burn to the ground and burn to nothing. Those, con those contrasting views are, are, are truly interesting. So therefore, the question then is, why does the mother show such deference to D? So then what happens in the middle of, in the, at the end of the story is, the mother eventually makes a, a decision. The mother eventually makes a decision. And she decides to give the quilt to D. The question I was going to ask you was that, what would you do in that situation? Because here's the thing. These quilts um, are quite valuable, right, by any standard. I mean, you know, these are quilts that had the material from relatives, their ancestors, from the Civil War. One of the, their, their ancestors was a soldier in the Civil War. And that the, the piece of their material is also stitched into some of these quilts. Um, and, 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 and these mother knows everything about the quilts and the making of the quilts, and Maggie knows everything about the quilts. So these view that they should preserve this seems, seems, wouldn't you say, a reasonable thing to preserve the history, to preserve the culture, and so on. Um, and yet, she says, and probably rightly so, why should you preserve, why should we give this to Maggie? Because Maggie is going to use it. 
and Maggie is going to use it, and when she uses it, it's going to be destroyed and going to be lost. And the rejoinder that comes from the mother and from Maggie is that, well, Maggie knows how to make quilts, and she'll make more quilts. Um, but Dee is saying, but this is a very specific kind of quilt. This is a quilt that has the legacy, the history of the, the, the of the of their people. But the question is, is 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 Dee's reading of the the importance of the quilt is Dee genuinely engaged by um, this history, or is she engaged in this history as is suggested by the mother, because she's now trying to impress upon the people like you know, the man that she brings, who the, the mother sort of nicknames Asala as Lakum, because of course he's using um, a Muslim, he's a Muslim, he's a black Muslim. Um, and and, and uh, Alice Walker is teasingly, you know, um, creating that nickname it, because Dee is trying to impress them. And the question is, does Dee genuinely understand her heritage and so on? Um, Alice Walker then, so this is where, you know, to, you know, tomorrow we'll look at the title of the work because, of course, the idea is that Maggie will effectively learn how to make quilts and do all the things that are related to the quilts, and so there will be no need for her to preserve this material. Um, the mother is faced with that choice, and I think Alice Walker intentionally makes D a negative figure. But the ideas that D espouses are, cannot be negative. Right? So it's a very interesting thought because the ideas that D espouses are ideas that seem valid. Black consciousness, um, a, an awareness of the, of the history of African Americans and so on and so forth, um, and a valuing of those things. But it seems like Alice Walker has a bigger point to make because, of course, if you're doing that at the expense of the, 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 the people, the people of the earth, the people who, the African Americans who are living there, if you're doing this reach to Africa, um, in that way, then something is quite funny. There's a joke in the middle of that story. There's a really interesting joke in that story, which has to do with this Afrocentrism. The joke in the middle of that story is that the the name, the name that 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 D takes on, is a Swahili name, um, and it's interesting, of course, because Swahili is in West Africa, in East Africa, which is not really where African Americans came from, most of them came from West Africa, West Africa and of course Central Africa um, and Central Central Africa, but not from East Africa. So there's a sense in which Africa is just this vague, amorphous place um, that D doesn't even have the language and understanding of the differences within Africa itself. Um, but she is also reaching for something genuine. She's reaching for something genuine. Um, but Alice Walker seems to make the by making the a kind of villain, she's swaying the argument towards this idea that human beings and the dignity of human beings is more important than ideology. The love of human beings and the dignity of human beings that Maggie, who has stayed, Maggie, who was wounded, Maggie, who was silenced, not unlike Alice Walker herself, is the one who should be given the space to find her identity and find her space. But Maggie is not educated. Maggie can read. Maggie reads to her mother. But Maggie is not educated. Very interesting conflict and difficulty. So we'll go on to discuss um, this question of Afrocentrism um, in the next talk.